I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast, episode number 86, Emotional Storage. Your life does not have to revolve around your husband's pornography addiction. You are not defined by his choices or by what he sees on the screen. You are not just the porn addict's wife. You are so much more. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to go from handling it to healed because I've been where you are and you don't have to stay there. My name is Jolene Wynn. I'm a member of the LDS faith, a certified life coach, and a wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. Hello, my ladies. How are you? Happy new year. Can you guys believe that it's 2022? I'm a little flabbergasted. I'll be honest. I was talking to my husband the other day and I still feel like it's 2020. I feel like the last two years have been all one long continuing, <laughs> continuous year um, for so many reasons, but it has been bizarre to feel how fast time goes by. Again, ladies, I feel like time goes by faster every single year, but I love the new year. And while I am always continually focused on growth, I do love that everyone kind of is. I love seeing new people at the gym. I love talking about New Year's resolutions with people. I love the self-reflection that it always brings. I'm pretty good at self-reflecting a lot just as my life goes on. I'm, I'm pretty good at it, but I do love the intentional focus that most people bring. And I have so much fun on New Year, we always talk about goals and I write them down in my phone. So I've had them in my phone of the last, you know, several New Year's. You know, we do them with my kids. My kids will say something that they want to do this year or focus on. And it has been so fun. And I do it with my sister and my brother in law. And it's been really fun to see what our goals have been throughout the years and to see what actually happens <laughs> and what doesn't actually get created. Um, but it has been so fun. So I'm excited. I'm still kind of working on really defining what it is that I want to do this year, what I want my focus to be, what I want my goals to be. And so I'm still working on that, but it was super fun. Usually I go to bed at, you know, nine o'clock <laughs> this, even on New Year's. But this year we actually stayed up and we went to Top Golf. If you guys have ever been to something like that, Drive Shack, Top Golf, something like that. And it was my dad and another couple and my brother-in-law and my sister and then my husband and I. And you got to golf from 9 till 1 a.m. And we were there at 9 and we were there till 1230. So I didn't go to bed till after 1, which is so weird. And I had to take a nap that day in order to <laughs> to make it. As you guys know, I am not a night owl. But it was super fun. They golfed. I just watch. I'm not a golfer. You guys, it's too complicated for me. I can't figure it out. You bend your knees, but you got to keep your hips. But one of the arms has to be straight, but the other one is bent. And then you have to like swing. I don't know. I can't do it. So also I have zero hand-eye coordination. So I never hit the ball. So I just stay and I watch and it's super fun. And I get just as much enjoyment out of watching probably more than actually golfing. So I got to watch and everybody else was golfing and it was a lot of fun. I ate a lot of food. It was delicious. And we rang in the new year, which was actually pretty fun. So once I get my goals solidified, I will share them with you because I think that's super fun. And it was actually something that we talked about last week on my coaching call with my clients. And I'm going to talk about more about that in just a second. But I wanted to let you guys know that I am looking, I really want to get 10 more of you to sign up not get. I'm really hoping that 10 more of you sign up before our kickoff call on January 20th. On January 20th, I've decided to do kind of a fun kickoff call for the lifetime access for everyone that has joined over the last couple of weeks and is going to get lifetime access to coaching. And one of the things that I want to focus on is in this call is I want to help you if you have goals or resolutions or a mindset that you want to create and you want to really solidify how you're going to do it, I want to encourage you to come to the coaching call and I'm going to help you do it. And if you haven't created a resolution yet or a goal yet, come join and come to this call because I'm going to take some time to do kind of a workshop in the beginning and really help all of you get really solidified on what your goals are, why you have them. And one of the things I was talking to my sister about on New Year's Eve, she has a weight loss goal. And she was talking, she said, I have had the same weight loss goal for the last four years. 
And obviously, there's something preventing me from accomplishing it. There's something that is in the way. And I know it's internal, but I can't figure out what it is. If you have something like that, if there is something that you want to do or create, or if there's weight you want to lose, or if you want to go back to work, or something that you've had as the same goal, if you want to you know, take, create a certain habit and you haven't been able to do it yet. I want to really encourage you guys to come join coaching and come to this kickoff call on January 20th, because that is what I'm going to be focusing on. I want to help you guys get the new year 2022 started off on the right foot. I want you guys to be successful this year. And the only thing that's in the way is yourself, which is the best news ever. So if you are tired of having the same goals over and over, or if you want to have something be different this year, I want to really encourage you guys to come join. I am so excited about this program. I'm so excited about what I'm offering. I'm so excited about creating all this new material for y'all. And you do have to be a part of the program to join this kickoff call. So head to my website, jolenewin.com. You can click on the join now button. It will send you directly to my website so that you can sign up today as soon as you're listening to this, and then you can get started before we get on our kickoff call on January 20th. That kickoff call will be at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the cool thing too about the lifetime access is I will be running multiple coaching calls a week. So you can decide whichever time works best for you. And since you have lifetime access, there's not as much stress about, oh my goodness, I can't make it this week. I'm gonna miss a week. No problem, no worries, because there is so many, so many more opportunities for y'all to get coached, which I'm so excited about. Again, it's $2,500 and you can either pay all up front or I have payment plans, whichever works best for you. So I cannot encourage you guys enough to come join me. I'm so excited. I know I need to stop talking about it, but I'm so excited about this call. I'm so excited about this kickoff. I want to help you guys be successful. I want to help you uncover the things that are in your way and help you work through them so that you can have exactly the life that you want. That is why this program, my coaching program, is all about being more than the porn addict's wife. You guys already know how to be the porn addict's wife. You've already done it. I'm going to teach you how to be more than that, and I'm so excited about it, so come join me. Now, as kind of an introduction to what we're going to talk about today, I want to talk about the coaching call that I had that I mentioned last already the coaching call that I had with some of my clients last week. We were talking about New Year's resolutions and one of my clients came to me and said, I have this resolution. I want to spend more one-on-one time with my kids. And I was like, great, awesome. Why do you want to do that? And as we coached and as we got deeper, she mentioned some things that she hadn't really realized. And then she just sent me a message a couple of days afterward. She sent me a message on Slack, which is our private coaching channel. And she said, I've been thinking about what we coached on this morning. And I realized, she realized that she had some emotions that she was feeling. She said that were getting in the way of me being present with my kids and showing up for them in the ways that I want to. I don't know how to resolve this. And I love that this is what she brought up. First of all, that that she had the awareness of this is huge, which is one of the best things about coaching is becoming aware of things you didn't realize were there in the first place. And then second of all, recognizing that the emotions she was feeling were preventing her from showing up in other areas. So the emotions that she was feeling toward her husband were preventing her from really showing up for her kids the way she wanted to. And that's what I want to talk about today. Okay. I want to talk to you guys about emotional storage. All right. I'm so excited about this. I've had this for weeks. This podcast was inspired because of a little situation that I had with my Gmail account. So let me tell you about it. Okay. Starting with a story. So I have had a personal Gmail account for years and I'm pretty good at organizing my inbox as stuff comes in and putting it in various folders. And a couple, uh, one of the things though that I'm not super awesome at is when my sisters, I have several sisters who take pictures and videos with a really nice camera. And so after we have a birthday party or an event, or if they just had their camera out and we're taking pictures, they will email me photos. And so I'm very good at taking those photos and putting them in my photos folder, but I am not good at getting the photos from that photo folder and downloading them onto my computer. So 
what happens over time is that folder starts to store more and more and more photos and it takes up a lot of the storage of my email account. So a couple of months ago, I started getting these really nice emails from Gmail that said, hey, just so you know, your storage is getting full. And so we really would like you to, we want to recommend that you start looking at your storage and you kind of clear it out and you take some, you know, preventative measures to open up your email storage. And I was like, great, ignore, delete. (laughs) Oh, I'll do that later. Okay, it's kind of like when I talk to you guys on the podcast and I'm like, I'd really encourage you guys to come work on your emotional health with me. And you're like, yep, great. I'll do it later, right? (laughs) Can you see where this is going? So as the weeks went on and I continued to ignore these emails, I got kind of stronger worded emails that were still very nice. We're like, hey, just so you know, your storage is really almost full. And pretty soon you're going to stop being able to receive any more emails. And I was like, great, okay, so I just went in, what's the easiest way to do it? What's the first thing that I can do, the easiest thing to do that can just, you know, open up a little bit of storage? So I go into my, you know, spam folder and I delete everything and it opens up like 1% of storage, right? And that gets me through another week and then I do it again because I get another email that says, hey, you're not gonna be able to receive emails starting like tomorrow. And so I'd open up just a teeny tiny little amount of space so I could get emails the next day, okay? And this went on for several weeks and then all of a sudden, I stopped receiving emails and I didn't think anything of it because it only been a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, my husband and I took our kids to go see a movie. We went and saw The Chosen in theaters. Remember in December I talked about this? Well, what I didn't tell you was that we went, I'm the one that bought the tickets on my phone. And so I was the one that got the email that had all of our ticket receipt information and seats on it, right? So we did that. It was probably a Saturday or a Sunday that I bought those. And we went on Wednesday to the movies and we get there and I try to pull up the tickets on my phone. Only guess what? My phone, my email is completely out of storage and hasn't received emails in several days. So I do not have the confirmation email with all of our tickets on it. So we stood there for 45 minutes trying to get our tickets that we'd already paid for, trying to get them up on my phone somehow. And we could see that I purchased them, but I had purchased them with Apple Pay, not my credit card. So we tried to go into my credit card to find the account, but all we could see was the Apple Pay and the movie theater because it was on Apple Pay. Couldn't see how many tickets we'd purchased. They could only see that we had purchased some. It was a disaster. It was a fiasco. And we were almost late to the movie because my email was out of storage. So here's what I want to here's what I immediately thought of. I immediately thought of how this is exactly like what we do with our emotions. We have a certain capacity to store emotions inside our bodies, right? You guys have heard me talk about emotional baggage, right? But here's what happens when we aren't, when we don't know how to process that emotion, when we don't know how to filter it and we don't know how to release it, it ends up taking up a lot of our emotional storage. And then the more we take in and the less we deal with it, we tend to reach, we, we get closer and closer to reaching our max capacity for emotional storage. Now, I've talked about this before, as the wife of a porn addict, we have a pretty high ability to store emotions, right? We have kind of a high emotional pain tolerance, okay? I I talked about this in an earlier podcast. You can go listen to it. Um, I think it's called emotional pain tolerance. We have a high capacity to tolerate a lot of emotional pain. We can store a lot of emotions, okay? But eventually what happens, the more we take on without dealing with it, the more we suppress, the more we don't look at and process the emotions that we have, the closer and closer we get to reaching our max capacity. Now, here's what happens, is our life tends to be a little bit like Gmail, okay? And it will email us, we'll get this little kind of notification. We'll like super overreact or something, we're like, we're pretty much at almost at our wit's end. Have you noticed, right? Like maybe we need to 
you know, you'll get some kind of internal message where you just know you're like almost going to freak out. You're almost going to break down. You're real close to losing it, right? We kind of know when we're there. And then we'll kind of simmer it down, kind of like I did, where we do the easiest thing to increase 1% of our storage capacity, right? We'll take a bath or paint our toenails or take a nap or call our best friend and vent for a minute. And it's great, but all it does is really increase about 1% of our capacity, our emotional storage capacity, because we're not really dealing with all the problem. We're only dealing with this tiny, whatever the easiest thing is. We're like, let's just blow off a little steam and then I'll be fine. And you are fine for about another day until the next email system starts to come in and your storage starts to get full again, right? So here's the thing that we can do. The thing that I kept getting in my Gmail was, hey, your email's almost out of storage. We recommend increasing your storage capacity. You guys, I don't know all the technical terms, right? But it's like, hey, you have so many gigabytes, megabytes, terabytes, whatever of storage. If you increase it, then you don't have to deal with this yet. And sometimes we do that. Sometimes we increase our storage for our emotional storage, right? We're just like, great, I'm almost at my wit's end. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the amount that I can handle and then I'll be fine. But all that does, ladies, is push it off into the future. Okay, increasing my Gmail storage would have temporarily solved my problem, but it doesn't solve it in the long run because eventually if I continue the same patterns, I will eventually hit my max again. And now Gmail is different because it can can obviously always keep increasing, but as a human being, we have a limit where we actually physically break down. Have you guys ever seen this? Have you, or experienced it yourself? You reach a, an emotional capacity limit where you then physically break down, right? As human beings, we have a limit that Gmail does not, okay? That the virtual cyber world does not. They have limitless ability to store things. I don't understand it at all, okay? But we as human beings do not have an infinite ability to suppress and store our emotions inside of us, which is why you need to learn how to process your emotions so that you don't break down. Does that make sense? Now, here's something that I want to mention is a lot of times when we are feeling a lot of emotions, when we are carrying around, when we are storing a lot of emotion that we don't need to be storing from the past, right? We It's easy to blame our overreactions or our emotional storage capacity on the things that are coming in, on the input, on all the emails we get, right? Oh, well, if I weren't getting so much spam email, then my storage wouldn't be full. And we want to blame it on the, the spam emails. But the truth is, is that when you go in and you actually delete all of those spam emails, it's really only 1% of what you're storing, right? Now, in the same light, it's very easy. Our brain wants to blame everyone else and everything else on our emotional limit, okay? Oh, it's just because it's the holidays and things are more stressful around the holidays. So once the holidays are over, then I'll be fine. Oh, it's just because I'm taking this test in school. It's just because our bank account, we put a lot of money on the credit card. It's just because he had a relapse last week. I will be fine later. It's just because I had a big fight with my kids. All of these things that we tell ourselves are not true. You are not at your emotional storage limit because of what's coming in. It's because you aren't dealing with what's coming in. The best thing that you can do is learn how to process your emotions so that you stop repeating the same pattern. Because if you keep doing what you have always done, you will continue to get the same result. If I continue to put my nicely taken photos in a very nice little folder named photos for the rest of my life, I will again eventually hit a point where I get an email that says, hey, you're out of storage and you're going to stop being able to receive emails. You will hit your max capacity for storage. And that is exactly what happens if you don't learn how to change your emotional storage habits. 
Ladies, do you guys see this? I just had, I just seriously busted up laughing when I, when I realized that I was unable to receive emails and that I had missed this email and that it was causing problems in my life. I was like, this is exactly what happens when we don't deal, deal with our emotions. We eventually hit an emotional wall and then we break down. Then we can no longer take anything else in. And that is when we stop living our life. And even when we are taking stuff in, but we're almost at our max, that is a very stressful place for us to be because we know we're almost there. We know we're almost at the brink. We know we're almost going to break down. And so we're very, very, guys, you know, our, your emotions are super close to the surface. That is what we live all the time, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can learn, if you can learn how to process your emotions as they come in, then you never have to worry about reaching your max capacity for storage, for emotional storage. This is how you get healthy emotionally. You learn how to process those emotions, not compartmentalize them because that is something that's what I was doing, right? Taking photos as they come in and putting in my photo folder is great, but all it is is compartmentalizing it which is what we do with our emotions, right? We have some kind of traumatic experience. We compartmentalize it. We say, I'll deal with it later, but it's still taking up space internally. We have to go learn how to work through all of that. That is how you get to a clean, open space. And that's how you live a life where you aren't always on the brick of a brink of an emotional breakdown. You aren't at the brink of your emotional capacity. It's amazing, ladies. This is how I can talk about my husband's pornography addiction all day, every day to all of you and to all of my clients. And it's not an emotional weight because I have dealt with and processed all of that trauma that I put in that little file folder and compartmentalized to deal with later. I actually went back and dealt with it. Now, sometimes, as I said, we get to a place where life creates that for us where we reach our emotional capacity and we have to, because we physically break down, we have to face at least some of what we've been shoving down and not dealing with. That's usually when I get phone calls. (laughs) I'll be honest. That is usually when I get phone calls from women. Now, here's the thing is those women don't typically sign up for coaching. Not all the time. Sometimes they do, but a lot of times they don't. Do you want to know why? Because they're not ready because they aren't ready to actually make the changes to deal with and process all of the emotions from the past because they haven't chosen to do that on purpose. Life has made them hit a wall. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is see the difference. There is a difference between hitting a wall and breaking down and having nothing left and then trying to get help versus recognizing what is going on, the patterns that you've created and wanting to do it differently. And that makes all the difference, I swear. Wanting to do it differently. If you want to do it differently, if you don't want to keep repeating the same emotional patterns that you've been creating, that you've been having, come coach with me. Because I will help you see the things that you haven't been able to see in yourself. That's the beauty of having a coach, you guys. It's not like I have all the answers. You do. Sometimes I can just see them because I'm not you. I'm not always in your brain. I'm looking at it differently. And that is what I bring. And I can teach you how to do it because I've done it. And I've helped dozens of women do it. I can teach you exactly how to work through all of that emotional storage. All of those emotions that you have been storing inside of you, I will teach you how to work through them, even the ones you've compartmentalized and you don't want to look at. I can teach you how to work through those so that you can have a life that isn't constantly on the brink of an emotional breakdown. A life where you can feel all the feelings, process them as they come, and enjoy every moment of it. Again, ladies, come join coaching and I will teach you how to do this. I wanna really encourage you ladies to come join today so that you can come to that kickoff call on January 20th. We are gonna get this started. I cannot wait. Stop storing emotions that you don't need to store. I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, ladies, I love you so much. Happy New Year. I'll talk to you next week. Take care. All right, my ladies, if you enjoyed that podcast episode, you have to come join my coaching program. 
It is $2,500 for lifetime access to all of my online content and all of my coaching calls. Not only will you get one-on-one attention from me through coaching calls, you will also get to join this amazing community of women who are all working through this the exact same as you are. You'll also get 24 seven access to me through Slack, our private group messaging channel, and you will get access to all of the new material and content that I create. If you are ready to start applying everything that you've learned on the podcast and really take everything to the next level and start creating who you are as more than the porn addict's wife, I want to encourage you to come join my program today. Head to jolenewin.com, click on join, and you can join anytime. I can't wait to see you there.